In this video, we're going to talk about how to memorize the unit circle. Now, the first thing we need to be familiar with are the angles of the unit circle in radians. So here we have 0 degrees, and a full circle is 2 pi. Half a circle is 1 pi, and half of pi is pi over 2. So you can think of this as 1 pi over 2. Pi is the same as 2 pi over 2 and this is 3 pi over 2, and 4 pi over 2 is the same as 2 pi, which will take us back to 0. Now what we're going to do at this point is break up the unit circle into 8 equal parts. Now the first one is going to be 1 pi over 4. 2 pi over 4 reduces to pi over 2. And then here we're going to have 3 pi over 4. And then 4 pi over 4 simplifies to pi. This is 5 pi over 4. 6 pi over 4 reduces to 3 pi over 2. And this is 7 pi over 4. And 8 pi over 4 is the same as 2 pi. Now the next thing we're going to look at is this angle, which is 1 pi over 6, and then 2 pi over 6 reduces to pi over 3. 3 pi over 6 is the same as pi over 2. Next we have 4 pi over 6, which reduces to 2 pi over 3, and then over here, 5 pi over 6, we can't reduce that to anything, so we're going to write that. 6 pi over 6 is pi. Next, we have 7 pi over 6. And then 8 pi over 6 reduces to 4 pi over 3. So that's a new one. We'll have to put that over here. 9 pi over 6 is 3 pi over 2. And then 10 pi over 6, if you divide 10 and 6 by 2, you get... 5 pi over 3, and 11 pi over 6 can't be reduced, so we're going to write that here. And so that's how you can get the other angles in radians. Now, we need to talk about the values that correspond to these angles. So let's focus on the values that are located on the x-axis and on the y-axis. Let's see if I can fit this one here. So on the x-axis to the right, x is going to be 1. For the unit circle, the radius is 1. On the left side, x is negative 1. On the y-axis, x is always 0. x is 0 at the center. Now for the y-values, y is 0 on the x-axis. At the top, y is positive 1. At the bottom, y is negative 1. So that wasn't too bad, was it? Now let's focus on quadrant 1. Quadrant 1 is located on the upper right corner. Quadrant 2 is located in the upper left corner. Quadrant 3 is located at the bottom left. And quadrant 4 is located in the lower right corner. In quadrant 1, both x and y are positive. Now let's write the values that corresponds to pi over 3, pi over 4, and pi over 6. So let's go in this direction first. Let's focus on the x values. So we're going to increase it from 0 to 1. So this is going to be 1 over 2, or you can think of it as square root 1 over 2, and then square root 2 over 2, square root 3 over 2, and this is equivalent to square root 4 over 2, which is 1. Now for the y values, we're going to increase it from 0 to 1 in this direction. So after 0, it's going to be square root 1 over 2, and then square root 2 over 2, and finally square root 3 over 2, and square root 4 over 2 is 1. That's a quick and simple way to find out what these values are on the right side. 
Now to find the other values, it's going to be a reflection of what you see here across the y-axis. The only thing that will change is the signs. In quadrant 1, we said that both x and y are positive. In quadrant 2, x is negative, y is positive. x is negative on the left side, y is negative below the x-axis. So let's go ahead and fill in the values for quadrant 2. So notice what we see here, square root 3 over 2 and 1 half. You want to copy that on the left side. So this is going to be the same thing on this side. However, the x value will be negative. That's the only difference. So exactly what we see at pi over 4, we're going to copy that for 3 pi over 4, just making the x value negative. And what we see for pi over 3, we're going to copy it for 2 pi over 3. But it's going to be negative 1 half instead of positive 1 half. Now, in quadrant 3, both x and y are negative. So all of the values with pi over 6, like pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6, they will all have this value, square root 3 over 2, comma 1 half, but the signs will vary based on the quadrant it's located in. So 7 pi over 6 will have the same values as pi over 6. However, both x and y will be negative. 5 pi over 4 will have the same values as pi over 4. But x and y are both negative in quadrant 3. And 4 pi over 3 is going to be similar to pi over 3. But everything is going to be negative. Now, in quadrant 4, x is positive on the right side, but y is negative below the x-axis. Eleven pi over six is going to be similar to pi over six, but only y is negative this time. Seven pi over four will be similar to pi over four, and five pi over three is going to be similar to uh, one pi over three, but y is negative. So hopefully you can see everything. I had to squeeze as much info as I can into this small page. Now, you need to know the angles in degrees. And you could simply convert the angles from its radian value to its degree value. And just know this, pi is equal to 180 degrees. So to convert an angle measure from radians to degrees, just replace pi with 180. So here we have pi over 6. 180 divided by 6 is 30. Here we have pi over 4. So 180 divided by 4, that's 45 degrees. And this is pi over 3. So 180 divided by 3 is 60. This is pi over 2. 180 divided by 2 is 90. 2 pi over 3. So 180 divided by 3 is 60 times 2, that's 120. 3 pi over 4, 180 divided by 4 is 45 times 3, that's 135. And then 5 pi over 6, 180 over 6 is 30 times 5, you get 150. And then pi is 180, 7 pi over 6. So I think it's pi over 6 times 7. So that's 30 times 7. You get 210. 5 pi over 4. It's 5 times this value. So 5 times 45 is 225. 4 pi over 3. It's 4 times this value. 4 times 60 is 240. 3 pi over 2. It's 3 times pi over 2, or 3 times 90. So that's 270. 
5 pi over 3. It's 5 times pi over 3, which is 5 times 60. And so that's 300. This is 7 times pi over 4. 7 times 45 is 315. And 11 times pi over 6. 11 times 30 is 330. And so that's how you can quickly populate the angle measure in degrees in the unit circle. Now the last thing that I want to do before I conclude this video is I want to show you how to use the unit circle to evaluate trig functions. So I need to make some space because I'm out of space. Let's say if you want to evaluate sine of pi over 3. To use the unit circle, locate the angle pi over 3 and if you wish to evaluate sine, you need to use the y value. So sine of pi over 3 is equal to positive square root 3 over 2. Sine of let's say 5 pi over 4 is going to be, so first locate 5 pi over 4 and then select the y value. So sine 5 pi over 4 is negative square root 2 over 2. Now, when evaluating a cosine function, you need to look at the x value. So let's say we wish to evaluate cosine 7 pi over 6. So locate the angle and then use the x value. So this is x and this is y. So that's going to be negative square root 3 over 2. If you wish to evaluate a tangent function, let's say tangent of, let's use pi over 3. Tangent is basically y over x. It's sine over cosine. So take the y value, which is square root 3 over 2, and then divide it by the x value which is 1 half. Now, if we multiply the top and the bottom by 2, the 2's will cancel. And so we're going to get the square root of 3 over 1, which is simply the square root of 3. And so that's how you can evaluate a tangent function using the unit circle. So that's all I got for this video. If you like it, feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.